Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is the second video in the Once Dig Garden for Zero Budget. And today we're going to finally get to putting up rabbit protection. We're going to use that chicken wire on the left and for deer protection if you need it. We're going to use the bigger fencing wire there. We dug a circle, set it all up, no cost except our labor. And I apologize, I said I'd do it the next day. It's been about four weeks. You can see the grass coming up. But we'll do rabbit protection first, then we'll do deer protection, and then I'm going to plant this garden too. And we'll still try and keep it budget friendly. Of course, you're going to have to buy those materials. Uh, but for planting, um, rather than add amendments, we can look around our property, add some things into there, and we should do, be able to do it for a lower cost. So these are used for building uh, railings on decks. They're about three and a half foot tall three and a half feet tall. You can buy a bundle of them. They're not expensive. They're probably under a buck each. This is what I like using for um, any kind of different things I have to do in a garden. Right over there you can see posts that I put in. That's to keep the hose when I drag it around from whipping up and knocking the plants down. We're going to use a bunch of these to basically put them in like we're building a clock right into our circle area. If you have a square you could just build it as a square. But We're going to put one in at 12, 6, 3, nine and then we're going to put one in between the joints and that's going to be sort of our posts for our rabbit um, fencing to keep the rabbits out this will be plenty high enough so that rabbits don't bother this space so this is what the basic setup starts to look like you're going to put these down um, until they're really firm in the ground that's usually about 12 inches so we do a post at 12 3 6 and 9 and you just start here go across one over there go across and it just makes it easier to get the spacing right. The next one is going to go in here and then it would go right in between those posts, one over there, one over there. Eight is the maximum you need. If you want to stick to a budget you could try six, just space it out. And then we're just going to wrap the chicken wire around the bottom. That will keep the rabbits out. Now if you're on a budget you could take the next layer, put chicken wire around that. Yes a deer could come in here um, but they're kind of a little bit skittish. They don't like you know, being around that kind of stuff. If they're starving and hungry, they're going to come in, they'll stick their head in there, but they're not going to be able to get down to the bottom. Um, they also don't tend to eat tomatoes and peppers, again, unless they're starving. So the chicken wire comes in two foot uh, wide, 25 feet long cylinder, and I can't remember what that is. It's going to be somewhere between, really, I think, 15 and $20. The bigger fencing wire, which does keep the deer away. I put this around my fruit trees. That's 48 inches high, 4 feet high, 50 feet long, 2 inch holes. Deer can't get through that. That's more expensive. That was like 50 bucks. You can use whatever you want in your budget. If you just go with this wire, smaller rabbits can get through there. So again, thinking about a budget, just rabbits, you could use that. You could double it. It'll keep the rabbits away. We'll probably keep the deer away pretty often. If you just want to spend the money on something this big, you probably want to get some smaller holes, but the benefit of just putting the chicken wire down at two feet is that we can just come in and tend it. If we put up anything higher, we can't get in there either, just like the deer won't be able to, and then you're going to have to unwrap it. So I'm going to show you the design to make that a little bit easier. More expensive, but a little bit easier to manage. These posts are also going to be used to trellis up uh, tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that, so they have a dual purpose. So that's the basic design. And again, these are three and a half foot railing posts for decks. If you're going to double this up, you're going to need probably uh, six to eight foot posts. But this is the perfect size to keep rabbits out. You could trench along here, go a little bit deeper, but you want it to be nice and tight to the ground. So the only main difference between all of these is you're going to have one post as your anchoring point. So this is in deeper. You want it to be nice and solid. And then you're just going to put some nails or screws spaced out like that. Attach it here and then you just pull it around and it's pretty straightforward. I don't think I can do this one-handed but you start just pulling it out and go all the way around. I'll finish that up. Now you could also have to spend some money on fence cutters or wire cutters and once you get overlapped to here just cut your chicken wire down. Now these come in different gauge cutters, meaning different thickness of wire. So you want to get one that will also cut your fencing wire. Whoop, let's fix that. 
Hmm, technical. There we go. And this is basically how you can keep rabbits out. And when you need to tend it, you would just come unhook it from here if you need to, or you can just reach in and do what you have to do. I like this setup. It works. We'll keep rabbits away. And remember, you can go down deeper here if you want to. These cutters will also cut this. And that's what we're going to set up next for deer. If you don't have deer, you can stop right here. So if you need it, and I don't think a lot of people are going to need this, because deer will also be deterred by the lower chicken wire because they're brushing up against it. So if you're growing the stuff they tend to like to eat, it's usually lower to the ground. However, when I'm growing my fruit trees, I had to put this up really similar to this and it kept them away. They're just not going to fight. If they're starving and there's no food around, they will, but they'll just move to something else. And you basically unroll it. You could measure it out if you could figure out the circumference, but you don't want to cut this and be too small. So I do recommend, you know, measuring it out and, or just circling your garden just like this. And then we're just going to cut right down here with the wire cutters and it will kind of attach to each other. You could tighten it if you want. Um, but you're not going to need to do that. You can remove this. It's all set up to be removed. Take it off during the day, put it back on at night, however you want to do it. But these are two methods to stop rabbit and deer without building and spending a lot of money on an elaborate fence system, system like this. All right, so the deer fencing's up, rabbit fencing's up. No, this is not going to keep squirrels out, won't keep raccoons out. They will climb right over it. And, you know, I don't go down and twist all these on because you may want to take them off if you got to get in there at some point. You can just twist one over, that keeps it secure, and you have a space. Now in here we're going to be able to plant one, two tomatoes, a cucumber plant, maybe two pepper plants. So I'm going to pack stuff in here so that we get production. I'm going to use the post to secure some of the tomatoes. And then at least the space will be producing for you. Now, Again, I know that it's a bit costly to set this up, but if you're in an area with rabbits and deer, you don't have much of a choice. The good news is this will last easily five to 10 years. So you can use it year after year after year. All right, let's get to planting. All right, so my garden's over there and I told you we're trying to build the growing part of the garden at no cost. Come out to my woods. All of this is worm castings. It's free. If I start scraping away there, these leaves have been sitting here for 10, 20, 30 years. The worms eat them, they break them down. The concrete slab is old. I'm going to collect all of these and I'm going to put them on top of my bed. And that's exactly what I would do. However, when I go over there, I'm going to use leaf grow because I don't have the time right now to dig this all out. But the point is, is that you can go into your wooded area, family wooded areas, friend wooded areas, look around in the leaves, take that soil, bring home a couple five gallon buckets full of it, put it on top of your garden. That will be enough to feed your garden this year and you don't really have to spend a lot of money on the fertilizers, especially if you're spending money on the deer netting or the deer fencing and the rabbit fencing. All right, let's go set up that area and plant. So I decided to skip the cucumber. If you were gonna do that, I probably would do one tomato, one cucumber, and three pepper plants, something like that. And I'm over planting this. If you're just getting started, maybe just do three plants. But because we spent no money setting it up, very little money bringing in fertilizers if you bought any, consider this soil I pulled out of my forest area. I put down about a container that size on top. I'll use that to create the planting hole. I'll show you how to do that. But because we spent money on the fencing, just say we have rabbits and we have deer and we need to spend money. I want to see how much I can really get out of this. We're going to need some six or eight foot stakes for the tomatoes. I'm not going to do another video specifically on this as an episode, but when I start showing you how the tomatoes are growing and how the garden's growing, I will definitely come over here and show you what's going on. All right, so let's get to planting. Now I'll link the videos where I plant planted tomatoes so you can have some more details. But basically we're going to bury a quarter to a third to a half of the stem. This is an early girl. This is a bigger tomato. The other one's a cherry type. They both get planted the same way. And when you're planting over here off screen is where the screws are in the post. You don't want to plant right in front of that because you're going to be working to take the chicken wire off. 
but the chicken wire pops off real easily. I'll show you everything at the end of the video after I get this planted. Just loosen up the soil, throw in what you've collected from around the yard. The other tip I have is if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they sell torn bags usually for half price. So you could pick up a bag of manures or compost or soils and, and use that too. All right, planting it to about where I showed you, about up to here. Just drop it in, you don't have to be overly gentle. And that sets up the tomato. Pepper, we do the same thing, but we plant right to the same level. We don't go down any further. And that one's good to go right over there, but you get the basic idea. Let me plant all this, show you the end. All right, some final key points. That's lettuce across the back. That was chewed down unprotected by a rabbit. Now, for peppers and tomatoes, you may not need the rabbit protection. However, this garden was a little bit late getting started, and what I would have put in here, it's uh, towards the end of May right now, starting in March, I would put in a bunch of lettuces and greens and peas. So rabbits will definitely come and chew those down. So I may not need the chicken wire now, if it's outside where you have rabbits, you're going to need it for your cool weather crops, which you can plant in the spring, and then you can put another round into the ground in August for a fall season of cool weather crops. So I have in three tomato plants. I have a red, a green, and a cherry type in the back, and then those are two hot uh, Tabasco peppers. A couple of tips. The sun is right on this side. It tracks this way. So I have my biggest tomato plant in the back because that's going to grow and cast a lot of shade. I put in a, a post. That shade's going to fall away from the garden. And then I have my tomatoes on the right side and over here on the left side. So the sun is going to come around here. It'll be enough to take care of that pepper plant. I'll prune up that tomato plant, remove the bottom leaves. That's good practice. I'll show you that in other videos. And then over here I have my other pepper plant too. Again, out towards the front because there's sun here towards the end of the day and that will get plenty of sun. You just don't want to take the smaller plants and put them back there and then put all the tomatoes up here because it's going to make a big wall and then cast shade on them. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you some ideas of how you can protect your crops from rabbits and from deer. And if you need deer, you can go ahead and set something up like that. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.